That's the old Barking Abbey grounds down there. One of the great institutions of early medieval London, if not early medieval England, actually. That features on the route of another walk. Today we're taking a different walk, but I'll link to that video below. There you go, here's a map for us for our walk today. I wonder if that'll be any use. It'll probably be about as much use as the three or four maps I've got with me, to be honest with you. Ah, here she is, the river roading. How are you all doing? <laughs> it's beautiful and sunny, and I bet you're thinking, why is he all rugged up? Well, it's cold. It's cold. It's April now. It is lovely in the sun, but when you're not in the sun, wow, there's a chill in the air. I think there was a few snowflakes spotted in East London this morning. Anyway, I'm not here to give you a weather update, although, you know, we're always interested, aren't we? What I'm here to do is to pick up my walk along the east bank of the River Roding. Something I set out to do well, a few weeks ago now with the wonderful, brilliant Paul Powsland of the Friends of the River Roding, the River Roding Trust. And Paul showed me a path that the Friends had opened up from Ilford Bridge to what they're now calling Barking Wharf back there um, near the town centre. And that's where our walk ended that day, but it's, when I look back, I think I was so ambitious. I, I set out that day to walk the east side of the roading all the way to its confluence with the Thames. It's something I've never done before. I've never walked all the way down. I've walked this little bit here by Tesco's as far as Town Quay, but then I crossed over. So I've always been really intrigued by what was on this east bank of the roading. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm really excited about this. Um, I, I mean, who knows where I'll end up, who knows whether it's even possible, I don't know, I haven't got Paul here to kind of hack through the undergrowth and show me these hidden ways, these hidden ancient byways. But um, anyway, it'll be an adventure, let's see where we, let's see how we get on, let's see how we go. Already this looks slightly different, look at the water, it's so beautiful. So this Easter weekend, Paul is actually walking the entire length of the river roading with a couple of members of the Trust. So I wonder how they're getting on. I didn't know if he'd be back here by now, but it would seem not. I look forward to hearing a report of that, Paul. So straight away, <laughs> we've hit a problem. This doesn't look good, does it? So we've got a big building site here, private property keep out. That wouldn't stop Paul, mate. He'd be over that fence in no time. You couldn't even cross over and walk on the other side, not that that is my mission today. So I've got to find a way around here. I hope the diversion isn't too big, it's a bit of a pain. It looks like quite a fair old building site as well, that is going to be a significant detour. Embracing the spirit of Paul Powsland and the Friends of the River Riding Trust. Let's see if I can go down through here to avoid having to... Oh no, they've really... They've really covered that off, so I'm going to have to go the long way around. So this is not an environment built to encourage walkers, is it? I don't even know. I suppose we go over there, don't we? We go that way. It's interesting the way they've laid this out. Like you've got the zebra crossing coming from Tesco's, taking you to that island there, but then there's no way off that island. You have to go across the road there. There's no crossing to get across. So really, you want to cross over kind of here, I think. Negotiate it safely. I take road safety very seriously. If you do as much road walking as I do, you've got to. So our walk starts with not a walk along the, the banks of the roading as planned, but along this incredibly busy road here. I guess this is what the North Circular here to our right. I'll look that up. I should know that. I know. And we have a lovely Ibis Budget Hotel. Maybe we should spend the night there one day when things open up. Just 29 quid a night. I think that's a really weird photograph to be advertising this Ibis Budget Hotel. Next to the Ibis Budget we've got the, the Premier Inn behind what looks like a heavily locked gate. I'm not sure what that's saying about the status of this Premier Inn here. And yes, this is the A406 North Circular Road, a road I've been planning to walk for quite a while. Since actually I ended a walk down here one morning, just a kind of impromptu post-school run walk, I ended up down beside the North Cirque and I thought, I'm going to walk that. Still haven't done it. 
But we do have a path here beside the Premier Inn, which offers hope and reprieve from the North Circular. The River Roding really is one of the great rivers of London. But I don't feel it gets the kind of attention, say, that the Lee gets, which is obvious, because the Lee, I think, is the next major river after the Thames, but even the Brent, but of course, the Brent gives its name to a borough, also the Brent gives its name to a town, Brentford. And the roading just goes on about its business in a fairly humble fashion. But it gave us two magnificent towns, the towns of Ilford and the town of Barking, two great historical towns that left a massive impression on London and in a lot of ways point towards one of the possible futures of London. Barking now is a major centre of redevelopment, as we'll see on this next little bit of the walk here as we go through the town centre, if we can get down here. This is High Bridge Road. Wow, this is beautiful here, isn't it? I, um, I did print out an 1863 map of this part of the riding. But you can see there, it is uh, picked up by a gust of wind and been blown into the river. Apologies to Paul and others, I mean that's a very unintentional littering of the river, but at least it's a map of the roading claimed by the roading. And it looks like it's about to sail off out to sea. What a beautiful vista this is down here at Town Quay. Look how big this is now, but this is a fraction of the size it once was. I think we have the old corn mill up there. And the banks here are the key. What a majestic sight it is. So here, instantly, I have a dilemma. Do I stick to my mission of staying on the west bank of the river roading? I realised earlier on I may have accidentally said the east bank, I mean the west bank, the side that I haven't walked before. We've got a massive building site, so it's going to push me back onto the road, or do I cross over? I don't really see any point crossing over there. I've done that walk, I've made a video of it, I'll link below. It's the walk where I go from Barking Abbey and I walk down River Road. I've got no interest in doing that again. I'm going to have to go around here towards Beckton, towards Jenkins Lane. I'm going to have to take the hard route. It was nice to see a little bit of river bank before we get pushed back inland. Here comes someone up, up the river in a canoe. We can cut the corner through this new development. I don't think these places are inhabited yet by the looks of it, but... This one over here is called Fresh Wharf. I very much doubt that was one of the wharfs that was known for uh, fertiliser and manure and things like that. There should be one called Manure Wharf, shouldn't there? It says no through road, but I feel a responsibility to go up that road. This is another of those new communities waiting to stir into life. It looks for now as if the, the riverbank is well and truly sealed off. I really want to get to um, Handtrough Creek, which is just down here. And from memory, from talking to Paul, I think the Handtrough Creek is the remnant of the old, of the back river. The, the roading used to split back there between Barking and Ilford, and there was a big branch of it, like a meander. And I think the Handtrough Creek is what's left of where that meander, or that back river, rejoined the main branch of the roading. I could be wrong, but even so, it'd be a really good place to get to. I've really wanted to see it for a while, but I don't think I can get any further down here. Going back out and round the edge of this brand new development here, fresh wharf. I hope this will not lead to a dead end. Walk along this little channel here. This is not necessarily the bucolic river walk that, well, I didn't really think that was what I was in for, but you know, you hope. We carry on down Fleet Road here. I think we get to a footpath which takes us to the Hand Trough Creek. So this is the Fresh Wharf Custody Centre. 
This is where the police bring people after they've been arrested. It's quite a sizable chunk, isn't it? And it's an interesting location to have such a place. You can imagine this being a place of incarceration in times gone by. This section of the roading that we're approaching now here on the west side, and actually the same would apply on the east. In times gone past, when I say times gone past, I don't mean much more really than say 150, 160 years ago, would have been considered a really remote area. In the lower reaches, it would have been very marshy. And you had these kind of isolated cottages, these little colonies of workers that would have been associated either with the docks here and the quay around Barking and the confluence with the Thames, or kind of the, uh, the eastern end of the Royal Docks once that was built. There was a colony there at, at Cyprus, a place that's known as Cyprus. I will cover that again in a future video where I walk around Beckton. But for now, I think, yes, I think this is our footpath. There is a footpath you can take here, but that is not the one that I'm going to take. I'm going to carry on on this side. I remember now that that leads over to the other side of the river. Let's stay on the, uh, on the west bank. And here we have Han Trough Creek. What a beautiful landscape it is, isn't it? Really stunning, very dramatic. So although this map here doesn't extend as far as where we are at the moment, I'll put an arrow in, but you can see the, the split in the roading, the two branches and the back river here on the western side. I think that is um, the Hantroff Creek is the remnant of, of the point where it meets the roading. I could be wrong. But then again, Paul Powsland is not far behind me on his epic river roading hike from source to confluence. So maybe he can confirm this. If we carry on down here, we find the footpath. I have actually been to this little section here. My walk ended just up ahead there in the, uh, in the shopping center in that kind of weird sort of shopping colony. Today I'm resolving an unresolved walk. Actually, in a way, today I'm resolving two or three unresolved walks. The one I did down here, oh, I don't know when that was, 2017, 2016, in my school run days. And then I did, um, I did well, at least two in, those, in that era. And of course, there's the walk with Paul. And then there's the walk I did on, on, the, on the eastern side, where I could look across here and go, oh, I'd love to walk over there again. And here it is. What a magical little path here. It's a great name, isn't it? Oakentroff Sluice. Reminds me of something from The, the Hobbit. Oakenshield, Oakentroff. <laughs> oh, how lovely. This lady was photographing it. This tree, and I thought she might know which blossom it was, but actually she was photographing these little figures here, and she told me it's a Bulgarian tradition to wear this, these little red and white threaded figures around your wrist and then when the first blossom appears you tie it to the tree where the blossom has bloomed to wish good health upon people. What a lovely thing. So if you see that you know what it means. From memory this area here is known as Cuckold's Haven. Cuckold's Haven, I don't know if I'm saying that right which is a word that many, it seems to have come back into use. So it's an old word, it's an old English word for, for a husband whose wife is cheating on him and more often than not a husband who is quite relaxed about his wife cheating on him. And you see Cuckold's Point, Cuckold's Haven, the Cuckold Fields, the Cuckold Fair, the Horn Fair, various places that bear that name around London. But I think it was also used um, for places that were considered to be quite remote as well, whether that was because that was where maybe cuckolds had to go on a particular time of year. I think it's possibly associated with May Day as well. Um, there's some information online if you're interested about that <laughs> rather strange tradition. Where the horns come into it, I don't know. Sometimes in places that carried the name cuckold, some um, stag horns would be raised on a pole and in the horn fair they would wear the stag horns on their head. The cuckolds would dance around in ladies' clothes with horns on their heads. Colourful, interesting tradition. Why not revive it if we're interested in reviving traditions? <laughs> I think this is cherry blossom. I could be wrong. This is where the Handroff Creek 
meets the roading, or where the roading back river rejoins the main branch, whichever way you want to look at it. This is such a beautiful little path here, secluded away from the business of Barking Town Centre, from the, the North Circular Road, and we've got the A13 up ahead. But beautiful bit of peace and quiet here on this path. It really is a stunning view, though, isn't it, across this reed bed towards the buildings of Barking, industrial Barking there on the other side of the river. Massive self storage place there. And over by the uh, stationary wind turbine, we have another travel lodge. It's interesting, this section of the A13 here is known as Alfred's Way. And last time I walked down here, this was as far as I got. So everything beyond this bridge is a bonus. As you can make it out very clearly, but just through there, you can see that big old it looks like either a brick pillar or a brick tower. If it was a pillar, it might have supported a bridge across the river here. If it was a, some sort of uh, tower, it might have been part of an industrial works over there. A remnant of the old Victorian industrial Barking Riverside. So that's the shopping colony down there. The Showcase Cinema and the Pizza Hut and the Curries and all those other big stores down there. So quite a strange, interesting little development that. It really is a massive cinema, that showcase cinema there. It's really interesting to think of it being empty for the best part of the last year. I suppose cinemas could open for a couple of months last year, but other than that, and the path through here is really quite narrow, and I think it was completely overgrown when I was down here, what, four or five years ago, so that might be why I didn't carry on. is the continuation of the path. It opens out a bit more here as we head towards what they call the Northern Lagoon. Interesting. We talk about edge lands a lot, don't we? It's a term that comes up a lot. And it's fairly flexible, isn't it? But certainly when you're in an environment like this, it certainly comes to mind where you see the pylons here have the uh, the wind turbine through there. Over on the other side of the river we've got the industrial estate cutting through the, the natural environment that's sprouted beside this river which has been industrialized for quite some time. And we've got the modern fencing here, the shopping colony back there. It's got all the elements of Edgelands, the police detention centre. We've got sewage treatment works down here at Jenkins Lane. I mean, what more do you want? <laughs> there was a gas works here. It's got everything. And it seems as if rivers naturally give birth to edgelands. The kind of environments that thrive on the riverine culture. Okay. So, so just we were literally going to come down it. by the magic of the river roading, and confirming my belief that possibly Paul is the genus loci of the river roading, mm. he's emerged with 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 Jenny here. Hi. <laughs> and they they just walked the length of the river roading from its source, to, well, to here. They haven't got to the end yet, so maybe we could, you know, I've got to carry them to the finish line, perhaps. Have a glass of wine with to celebrate at the end. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Have you got like a quick thing to say how, what it was like as an experience? It, I loved it. Um, it's, been, it's been physically quite tough, 45 miles, four days, but I, I've fallen in love with the river over and over again. It's just the most beautiful little river with so many different parts to it. I could waffle on all day about it, but I won't. Um, I'm quite glad to be nearing the finish line, though. It's been... It's been physically quite quite tough <laughs> and we haven't been diverting away from the river so it's been lots of scrambling over fences through bushes and all this kind of thing so I'm glad to have finally got a path as well. 
<laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely you stunning. Know these things that I, I don't like. We have the, the, the sewage treatment works over there. But that's the end of the Northern Outfall sewer. But we will see the outfall, apparently, according to Paul, later on. It's wonderful, Paul, because I've been quoting you throughout, and now you're here, <laughs> actually manifested. I wish I'd been here with you earlier, because I've pointed out loads of things. You like, could. Although the, the San Martins weren't out, actually, they were nesting. So They're good, because I wouldn't have known them. what they were, yeah, yeah. We're going through the, uh, the nature reserve here. Really quite a beautiful, quite dramatic landscape. And how wonderful to bump into Paul and Jenny at the end of their epic trek along the riding. So there, look, this is this water channel here beside the sewage treatment works. So this is water I think coming out of the sewer treatment works. It's not really much of a smell, so obviously it's been treated. Look at all those bubbles on the surface, and like Paul said, there's things that occasionally pop up. I don't know what that is. Look at these pylons, they're absolutely massive. Paul has a theory about the um, the outfall here, the sewage outfall, which should be bound for the Thames, but... It mostly is. So mo the only times I've seen it is it comes out just over here. We'll see it in a minute by the Thames, but it also has the capacity to lift these big barriers here and come out just over there in a big pipe there into the roading. And I'm guessing it's because sometimes you can't discharge the Thames if there's a high tide. But obviously this bit of the roading is protected by the roading barrier so it could still come out even if there's a really super high tide basically. Stop it backing up into the sewage works, I'm guessing. It's a good theory, I'll take it. <laughs> you don't see roads like this in many parts of London, that's for sure. Quite a dramatic landscape here, down where the roading meets the Thames. There's the, well, I would say iconic flood defence barrier there, right at the confluence. It is such an uncanny feeling down here. This is like nowhere else in London at all. The only other similar location actually is across the river at the, the mouth of the river, Darren and the Thames, with its big flood relief barrier. But something special about this, something utterly otherworldly. the sewage from across North and East London ends up here. It's amazing isn't it? At the end of the Northern Outfall sewer. There he is Paul near the end of his epic hike along the length of the river roading with Jenny who's patiently waited up ahead so they can do the final little bit together. Yeah, here they go. Well here they go Paul and Jenny at the end of their 40 something mile walk along the river riding from the source to the Thames. This is a, this is a huge moment. What they don't want to do right now is trip over and break an ankle so they don't actually ever get there. <laughs> so not content with ending the walk right here at the wall, Paul and Jenny are going to try and get round the rocks to get to the actual confluence, the point where the roading actually meets the Thames, just over there. So the roading makes its confluence with the Thames, just the other side of that 
flood barrier over there. And here it almost feels like you can you can sense the sea when you reach the Thames at this re at this point. These well, I was going to say lower. It's not lower reaches, is it? But it's definitely a whiff of the sea. Some people would say that was a whiff of sewage. I think that's what Robert Elm said to me once when I said you could smell the sea from Erith. He said that's probably the sewage. And that's all the treated sewage from across North and East London pouring out into the River Thames here. At the confluence of the roading and the Thames. This is the end of my relatively short walk along the west bank of the Roding from Barking to the mouth of the Roding where it meets the Thames, the confluence of the Roding and the Thames, a sacred spot in pagan belief as I'm sure I've said every time I've encountered a confluence of two rivers. But obviously my achievement of making this relatively short walk today is massively overshadowed by Paul and Jenny's achievement of walking the entire length of the River Roding and they're ending it right here, right now. It's really wonderful to be here to witness this great moment, their fantastic epic hike. <music> His, his. We, had, we had to get to the had to get to the mouth, otherwise. Paul and Jenny at the end of the walk, <laughs> and they they, five miles afterwards. they offered a libation to the river god. Well, so thank you so much for joining me on that uh, <laughs> incredible, illuminating walk. The manifestation of Paul and Jenny at the end of their epic hike is on its personal highlight for me. So. Uh, Thank you so much. And thank you so much to my wonderful supporters on Patreon, the Radical Ramblers and the fellow travellers. Thank you to this gentleman behind me here who watches the videos <laughs> and just said hello. And as I ever like to say, and always like to say, and I'll keep on saying, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And now this week, genuinely, next week, could, I don't know, I mean, where should we go? Anyway, you tell me below where you would like to see me go. I can't say I'll do it, because obviously, you know, there are limitations. My bet is most of you will say the Wandle, I think. It's my, just my hunch. Mm -hmm.